Yeah. Turn your heating on. You have fucking the radiator radiators. There. Use them. By the way, radiators are fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. True story. They're you actually get, pretty good. You don't see them anymore, which is a shame. And I understand why. It's because they take up space and people don't want to give up the floor space for them. But they are incredibly, incredibly efficient at heating. Like, really quite good at it. Mm. And the double benefit is if you come in from, like, shoveling snow or being out in the cold or whatever, you can, like, take your gloves and set them on top of the thing, <laughs> and they'll be nice and toasty. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. You're not supposed to because it could start a fire, but, like, right. but just even, pay attention even, and you're good. Even putting them nearby is helpful. She rubbed her hands together to warm her numb fingers. Jeez. The mansion's heating system was inadequate, to say the least. Huh. Which meant that winter was the very worst of uninvited guests. I guess the space is too big for the radiator to handle. Never more so than on a dreary morning as this, when one didn't need to use a thermometer to know how cold it was. <laughs> Checks boobs. Yep, freezing. Nature's thermometer, yep. The mansion sat in the mountains and was surrounded by dense forest. Winter always arrived here first, before moving on to nearby towns. Do you live in Hokkaido? <laughs> uh, she might. I don't know. <coughs> the robotic ring of the telephone reverberated through the long hallway. The mansion's furnishings had been so perfectly maintained that it made the place feel unlived. It seemed lonelier than it did splendid. Coupled with the dreary morning, it could have passed for a haunted house. Complete with a ringing phone. Is it? Therefore, the ghosts live here. <laughs> huh. She counted more than 30 rings since it first began. The caller either had a lot of free time on their hands or had a good understanding of the house's circumstances. She had a strong hunch that it was the latter. Someone that knows her well, huh? The window above looked out onto a gloomy sky. She hastened to catch the unrelenting ring in the act as soon as possible. Though she had a feeling that her happy morning might come to a close the moment she caught it. It was here that a series of incidents began. Apologies for the lack of romance to this tale. <laughs> We started it with killing a bunch of cats. Uh, so. yeah. <laughs> For whether it be objectively true or merely supposition, it is always from gloomy and unassuming beginnings that extraordinary events are set into motion. Like waking up and going to school and fixing a, a air conditioning or, unit or radiator or whatever. I think it was a heater because it was kind of winter there too. It was autumn. Oh. Yeah. Best. Wait. Is that? Oh, okay. Ah, uh, Takeuchi and Nasu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? Are, why are you going to Homurahara? I'm confused. I think it's just similar. And my understanding is the reason this one looks so good is because it, it was made with their Fate's Day Night money. So they kind of went all out way back when they made this in like 2010 or so. I think it was 2012? I think it was like in development from like 2009 until 2012, but I'm not sure. And it took it took a while to make this one. The interesting thing, yeah, it's interesting that they noted Takeuchi because Takeuchi did not do the art for this. I think he might have... He, he probably he did, did like the character, concepts He probably stuff. did like the character designs, but yeah. the art for this was actually somebody else. From what I remember from the wiki. We've probably seen his name already, and I missed it. Oh, it might have. There's been a few. Let's see. Oh, yeah, and there's actually, like animation to the backgrounds now so you'll see like a bit of motion or moving lights and things like that so well good job on backgrounds euro yes it's got to be like a 
stage name kind of thing. Let's see. <laughs> Graphics. I miss when you used to see more stage names for people in video games because they didn't want to actually be associated with the video <laughs> games. Well, or they just didn't want to be bothered in real life in general. Lead programmer, Kyo B. Why are you going to school? Isn't it a day off? Uh, or it's her friend's school up the hill. Ooh, look at that. Goddamn. Oh wow, that came into focus and everything. Where were these kind of visuals in Stay Night? <laughs> they did not have the money yet. My understanding is that the Tsukihime remake looks closer to this, though. Which is one of the reasons it took so long. Scribble that out and just put Mahoyo there, thank you. <laughs> Mautsukai no Yoru. Yep. Not to be confused with Mautsukai no Yome, which is a different thing. <laughs> Ancient Mega's Bride is a very different property. Yes. Wow, that is a fancy school. It is, it's not your stock Rama school. The rain had subsided somewhat by the time she reached the school gate. Sunlight seemed to be playing peekaboo behind the clouds in the distance. It looked like it might be cleared up by early afternoon. So... <coughs> who... I, I'm still trying to... I mean, I know it's a roommate, but who the fuck is Emily? From from earlier, when she was like, Oh, why didn't Emily get the phone? Oh, no, it was, um... Game with an A. Whatever. Point yeah. is... Uh, not sure. She's got this roommate. Where's Toko? Oh, they don't... I don't think they're living together at this point. It's gonna be a bit before we see her, I think. The weather reflected her luck. On top of being forced out of the house at such an early hour, she had to suffer through a winter rain. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Oh, it did the Star Wars. <laughs> the sinking feeling she had only grew as she passed through the entrance and headed inside. What the heck is that thing on the board? Um, that's a really great... Hey, go back! I was trying to... <laughs> she didn't encounter any other students along the way. Nor did she see anyone taking part in club activities either. The reception desk to the faculty room simply read, <coughs> Faculty Closed. Mm -hmm. The school had given all of its students the day off. So it is she, her school. She did go to her school. Okay. Why? The person on the phone must have told her to come here, I guess. Okay, but why did you feel the need to put your uniform on? It's not a school day. Eh. Except those explicitly uh. summoned, like her. A fact that irked her more and more as the minutes passed. She opened the door to the faculty room and headed towards the desk she'd visited a number of times before. The man at the desk wore a plain shirt and suit that were nonetheless neatly pressed. Slim framed glasses adorned his face, giving off an amicable yet cunning air. The mild-mannered image this mid-twenties man presented clashed with the cigarette he smoked. He didn't appear to have noticed her yet. Yamashiro-sensei. Okay. She closed the door with a bang. Showing no response to the sudden sound, Mr. Yamashiro listed his, lifted his head. Yeah, ohayo, Aozaki-kun. Yoken wa kiite iru kana? Yeah, I got the call. Thanks, jackass. <laughs> I was trying to sleep. <laughs> Having graduated from this high school himself, Mr. Yamashiro was not much older than the rest of the students. Wow. I mean, weirdly, like, you see that all the time in anime where, like, the, yeah. the teacher's, like, 23 or something. Well, like, yeah, because they're fresh out of college. They just got their certificate and all that. First teaching job. For that reason, the students preferred him over the other teachers. 
He always had something interesting to talk about and kept conversations casual. Also, I, I knew this from the from the cover, but like it's kind of weird seeing black haired Alco. Oh yeah. In fact, he seemed more like an older student than a teacher, but she unfortunately didn't share her fellow students' fondness for him. Hmm. She was of the opinion that teachers should come across as more austere. Okay. Like an iron fist that could inspire both love and hate in equal measure. Not a buddy to joke and pal around with. Oh boy, let me introduce you to Soichiro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She would probably get along with him pretty well. You want an iron fist. <laughs> yeah. So eat your own. <laughs> he was the exact opposite of how she felt the teacher should be. It was only natural that her manner towards him would be forced and unfriendly. Not that she'd ever been wired to make friendly small talk. <sighs> you could tell, huh? <laughs> 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 Bitch, this is my every day. I was born with this scowl. The matter-of-fact answer perfectly matched the displeasure displayed on her face. I generated this the day I watched a cat get eaten by a motor. Well... <laughs> her bad mood from having to get up early and the tiredness from staying up late must have collectively made her look positively adversarial. So? As Mr. Yamashiro met her piercing eyes, he finally understood the reason behind her tone and simply, slowly, put out his cigarette. Didn't have a cigarette in the background, though. What did they tell me on the phone? What? Wake up and get to school. Yeah. Or your mind was hazy. Hard to say. One of Mr. Yamashiro's eyebrows stood up, impressed with the brevity of her answer. He could see that she was angry, not because she'd been called to school on her day off, but because she hadn't been told why she was here. Mr. Yamashiro chuckled sympathetically. Difficult circumstances. Difficult circumstances like he has to eat a basement full of orphans every so often to not pop out of existence, or like difficult yeah. <laughs> that his parents are dicks. Like that hmm. th this is important. Yeah. Sojiro. That is an interesting way to spell Sojiro. Yeah, I'm, I guess they're trying to spell them in a way that makes them more phonetic in English, but... They want you to know it's like Sojiro, not Sojiro, I guess. She threw him an unamused look. It was negligent of them to be pushing teaching duties on her, but she did wonder how exactly this transfer student was peculiar. Maybe he meant the student had behavioral problems, or was difficult somehow. Hmm. But peculiar? She didn't have the slightest idea what that meant. <laughs> nice boob shot. <laughs> They're really avoiding her face so far. They really are. That's impressive. They're like, hey, breasticles though. <laughs> oh. She had her doubts, but swept them aside for now. This wasn't the time to get distracted by more concerns. The fact remained that this conversation was all the peculiar she could handle, and she needed more information. She was already beginning to fantasize about saying no and curling up in her warm bed at home. Well, yeah. Well behaved and a good listener, 
覇気がないとも取れるけど、mm-hmm. それならそれで、well, like、he's not the difficult part then. 青崎君とはクラスは違うけど、きっと仲良くな。He's not even in our homeroom class? Oh, hey, there's like half her face. Yeah, we've seen bits of it. そうではなく、なぜ私なんでしょうか Though her tone was still stern, it was clear that she was willing to cooperate. She decided to put her feelings of dissatisfaction aside and focus on the task at hand. Forcing herself to act empathetic in spite of her self absorbed nature <laughs> was something she was used to. Paradoxically, this force of will was also the reason teachers put so much faith in her. To a point. At times, that strength shattered expectation, and on those occasions, They were left with no choice but to treat it like a natural disaster and weather it until it passed. That was how Mr. Yamashiro had come to deal with her at. Over the as, past year. Oh, yeah. That was how Mr. Yamashiro、huh. had come to deal with her as over the past okay, year. Okay, I kind of get that. He's treating her as the thing described in the first sentence. Yeah. It, An odd phrasing, but I get what they mean. It took, it took a second. Yeah. I'll ask you again, Yamashiro. That's it. Looking a little terse there. Well, to be honest, we did call like eight people, and you were the only one that picked up the phone.、So. Yeah, that'd be funny. You were the only one dumb enough to answer the phone. <laughs> Pressured by a question without a clear yes or no answer, he answered. あ。Strength far beyond that of an ordinary 17 year old girl, coupled with the youthful beauty of one. How old was she in Tsukihime? Quite a bit older. This is her backstory, so. How old is she in Melty Blood? Quite a bit older. Because <laughs> she doesn't look that old. Oh, yeah, but I mean, she's not a teenager. She's definitely in her 20s, if not 30 by then. Mr. Yamashiro let slip a genuine smile, admiring the miraculous balance of qualities. It has to do entirely with who picked up the phone. Might want to explain what this request is if the、uh, student isn't a pro. No,、so、I did weigh all sides. The sides were putting up with this or staying in bed and dealing with the ringing. Hmm. In other words, he knew she wouldn't say no. Yamashiro sensei. Wah, kwa! Mo, niramanai, niramanai! Itaro? Boku ni wa tomokaku. Kare ni wa ega o dette. Well, you're not my new schoolmate, are you? Toma, natuku shite kureta nara. すぐに移動しようもうずいぶん待たせてしまっているからねそれと雨の中ご苦労様帰りはもちろん車で送るよ Stranger danger? Well... Sus? 